this is the reason why uh, stern drive sports cruisers in about the 28 foot size range are losing their popularity in Sydney. Not completely, but they really are being overtaken by boats like this. I'm on the Dromia 28, built in Turkey. Um, a deep V air stepped outboard powered boat based on a single hull, which is very cool. If you're interested in how it drives, follow the link coming up on the screen now. We've just been for a test drive. Um, and multifunctional top sides. Perfect, but practical summer boat. Perfect to keep on a swing mooring if you need, stick it in a berth, run around at high speed, go to raft ups, go to your mates' places, do whatever you want. It's a really functional boat. So uh, this is the walkthrough. My name's Dan Jones. Welcome to Dan's Boat Life. We'll start at the back of the boat. So whip on round um, and let's try and show you as much as we can. Um, yeah, just, just practical, sensible layout. She's about a three ton boat. We've got the ferry wash coming in pretty soon, so we will rock around. But you have the heart of the boat. Oh, I'm not sure of the heart. This is the heart of the social scene. Um, you've got these two seats here, um, quite comfortable, but they will go forward and aft. So I'll just use this one as an example. Um, but you can just do that. So you can, same with this one, boom, boom. And there's also the option for a, a big uh, removable lounge cushions to turn this into one big day bed. So you can run underway with everybody facing forward or forward and aft like so. And when you get to your destination, you can turn this into one big day bed, but it doesn't end there. You've also got the, uh, the foundation here for a table. So you've got your lunch table just here and there is the ability for a sunshade. So the pole can take off from here and here and it attaches to the T-top and this whole area can be bathed in shade, which is super, super handy. So. Coming out to the back of the boat, we've got two kid and doggy doors, so it's centre console style, and we've got a gate on either side, so you can board from either port or starboard. On the starboard side, we've got the um, telescopic swim ladder. So, you just open this little guy here, and you've got a three-step telescopic swim ladder. I've got my sunnies on so I don't drop them in the water. And you can also see the professional mounting of the 300 Merc. You can do options for twin 250s or 225s. From what I just discovered in terms of the performance of this boat, I'm not sure why you would. Um, she goes good, she goes great. In terms of trimming the motor up and out of the water, you would put this cushion in this position here so you've got enough travel to get the engine up. I've got some rod holders sticking out on the back here. I already mentioned that for the sunshade. Got a swim shower that pulls out here and some courtesy lights, they're facing down so they're not gonna ruin your night vision, which is handy. Um, this is a nice take on some fender storage. Haven't seen this before. So this is thin, doesn't take up too much space, and they've got the custom Dromia thin fenders just in there. I like that. That's cool. They, they are putting a little unique touch on a lot of things as we make our way around the boat. Um, so below the floor, just here, um, we've got the Flexi Teak flooring. It's really comfortable. I'm a fan. Temperature's great underfoot. Grip's great too. Doesn't overheat too much. Um, oh, well, here you go. Here's our <clears throat> here's our poles for the sunshade, which go out the back here. Quite deep storage there. This one opens here, so I'm not going to open everything. Um, but you've got access to the four batteries on this boat. So I don't know how many are house and how many are crank, but you have a lot of power, quite clearly. Um, so that's cool. Now, is there anything underneath here? Oh, yep, there is a storage locker under this cushion and nothing under that one, but this one looks like it hinges forward. So I'll cut to a shot of that because I haven't actually explored it myself yet. Um, so this is pretty cool. You don't see many boats in this price category and this is an affordable price category, having something like this. Check out this boarding door, you just, isn't that cool? So that just drops in the water there, um, sits on that nice, usable angle and it's got the two built-in teak steps and then you use these little uh, plastic thingamajiggies to hold on so you can gracefully pull yourself out of the water. That is really, really sensible. I like that. And a feature, well there you go, do that a bit slower because it brings a little bit of water onto the boat. Um, that's a feature I think is a, a bit of a standout um, to be fair. And there we go. Now, these just here, I was looking at them before going, what's that for? It's just for fender, uh, for fender attachments because you've got a rail forward, you've got cleats aft and midships, 
but nothing here. So if you needed to hang a fender, if the rub rail wasn't thick enough or it wasn't in the right position, I should say, it's definitely thick enough, um, you can do that. So now let's focus on the heart of the boat. Um, solid T-top, no movement. We dropped off waves, literally. This thing did not rattle. So that's cool. You could utilize it, just going up this little ladder here, you could utilize it um, with some roof racks or even in its current state and get some boards up here, no problems. But I could see people putting, you know, epic skis, um, uh, stand up paddle boards and the rest on some proper roof racks that you would mount on this boat and be very, very happy. That's totally doable. And I think probably what they were thinking about in the design of this T-top because it's very, very solid. Um, this is your entertainment station. So you can have an optional Barbie. I assume it's gas because I saw a gas locker up forward. And then we've got the cutting board just here and the cold water only sink just there. But um, obviously a really good place to put you know, your platters and your food if you've been to the restaurant or the takeaway fish and chips as you could do right here behind us. So that's pretty logical. Just in here, we've got some storage. Obviously, you've got uh, shoes, a little bit of safety gear in there, and more storage in here as well. There is a fridge. I'll get to that. It's further forward. But midships, we have this really sensible fake floor in here. You can access into the bilge underneath that hatch just there, but um, it's a, just a good place for extra fenders. Um, so we have the custom fenders, but you can put more things. You could even probably get a wakeboard um, or something, other water toys, probably inflatable water toys to be fair, because a wakeboard might be a funny angle to get down in that hole. But if you had inflatable sup boards and that sort of stuff, they would go really well down there. Okay, so moving from midships, the aft end of the T-top finishes here. So it's really just protecting people in the middle of the boat. I see uh, water in over there, another well, geez, we have a few rod holders actually. Another one there, another one here, same on the other side, midship speakers. Um, and then we get to the heart. I love these rails everywhere because it gives you something to hold on to. But I've got some down lights over the cooking area. So of an evening, this is very usable. And then you have more down lights over the helm as well. So that's kind of cool. Midship's cleats here and here. Definitely a single person operator, this boat. Got a bow thruster single or twins, access to cleats, full walk around. It's no nonsense kind of boating this thing. So the fridge is underneath the navigator's seat. So you're never far from a drink, sensible place to put it. You've got a fire extinguisher underneath the helm seat or the skipper's seat, and you've got individual flip up bolsters and the armrests go up as well. So if you were big blokes, um, you might be sort of shoulder to shoulder. So that, if that's an issue, I would flip up the bolster there gives you a little bit more space because you can do it on this side as well. So that's the solution to that. And sitting and standing is all pretty easy. It's a fixed seat, but you have quite, amount of, a, quite a decent amount of room just here at the helm. So the wheel is adjustable. From a standing position, a guy of my stature has bucket loads like of headroom. So if you're a tall bloke or lady, you won't have any problems. I'm also looking straight through the glass. So people of six foot plus, are not going to be looking at the railing here of the windscreen. They're going to be looking through glass and therefore getting some wind protection and weather protection from that as well. Um, Steve, just get all this helm into shot and let's explain to everyone what we have here. Um, just a functional, sensible helm, nothing too crazy. Uh, Footrests just here, phone holders just here and here. This is actually pretty cool. So a lot of boats that I get on, you've got to muck around finding the battery keys in some awkward location. It is actually a frustration. Those little things that just slow your day down. One, two, three, you can do them from here. So I've got bow thruster, engine, service. Happy days, sensible. Why aren't more people doing that? I think that's great. Got the new Mercury throttle just here. Um, and from a seated position, I couldn't reach it. Standing, it was fine. So if I was really in active driving mode, I'd probably drive from a standing position. If I was a relaxed, open offshore cruising, I'd probably sit down. Um, key start, there's your emergency. I just didn't even use it today. You feel so secure in this boat. The high gunnels, it's just not a boat that I felt like I was gonna be thrown away from the helm. If you see a problem with that, um, put on the safety. You do you. 
Uh, nice uh, uh, steering wheel here with some uh, stainless steel like so. We've got the Dromius logo there. Fusion stereo on the port side, that'll Bluetooth to your phone. The trim tabs operation is the joystick style. So left leans the boat left, right leans the boat right, forward pushes the bow down, back lifts the bow up. We've got our windless control here and here. Then we've got horn, VHF power, navigation instruments, navigation lights, anchor light, interior lights, cockpit lights, courtesy lights, a stereo system, underwater lights, 12 volt outlet, macerator pump, bilge pump, refrigerator, freshwater pump, shower pump, windscreen washer, windscreen wipers, spare and deck wash. So once again, back to my point about this is a real single operator kind of boat. You can pretty much manage all the boat systems from here, from looking at that. Uh, no electronics installed on this one yet, but you can clearly put a flat screen of a moderate size if you wish. And we've got our Mercury digital throttles. And the bow thruster is in an interesting spot. It's up here. Tell you a trick. So if you've not seen this bow thruster uh, keypad before with the two buttons, don't operate them with a single finger because it's Murphy's law. If you're using a single finger, you'll press the wrong button and thrust the wrong way and you'll, you'll look like a dork. So what you want to do, you, you use two fingers and then you rest one finger on port, one finger on starboard, and then it's, uh, it's, it's a lot easier to operate. Um, compass just here, three-piece windscreen. These supports for the T-top do not provide any hindrance to your visibility. Um, we're gonna go downstairs in a second and we'll just have a look underneath here. What's this? Oh, access into the bilge, fresh water pump, shower pump, and seawater pump. So basically access to systems below there. And this well is drained uh, and it gives you more head height at the helm. So I think I've got everything there. Courtesy lights as we go up the stairs. You go up two stairs. Hopefully that wind's not interrupting on the microphone. So this is all one level. You go up a small step to get onto the transom platform and then two steps about yay high to go forward. Uh, Steve, maybe you go up the starboard side, I'll go up the port side and we'll check out the bow. This thing's just cool. So like, this is a comfortable area to chill. You could totally just hang out with four people up here, no problems. This rubber is thick as it is that thick. So you can just bang this thing into timber poles like you'd have at the dock here and not worry about it. But um, with a design like this, with an open bow, yes, we've got the bow roller, but it's only yay long. You could get it in nice and close to the pole, control the bow with the bow thruster, you know, collect the fish and chips, get the carton of beer, pass it on to friends as you, as you do, and off you go. So that's kind of cool. Navigation lights here and here. This is controlled from the helm. Um, let's have a look inside. Anchor locker, electric anchor windless, all chain, looks like about 30 to 50 metres. And this is our gas locker just here, which appears to be vented. So that's all sensible. I've got some courtesy lights just here, or a courtesy light, two more just there. Speakers, and my little lounge will pop up on a gas strut and allow some airflow into the cabin below. In terms of the comfort for the lounge, this is the sort of lounge you would use at rest. You would not sit on this lounge underway because you would block the driver's visibility because their, their sight line is at this level just here. So my back is gonna be in their face if you're driving at speed. So you just tell people to move back to the cockpit. Um, stainless steel windscreen wiper. Um, nice touch because I see so many mild steel ones uh, rusting on me uh, after a year or two. Uh, so you could, you've got the fresh water wash onto the windscreen just here, drink holder, drink holder here, and it is a drink holder that will take a tinny with a cooler, that's important. And the shore power, Scandinavian style, so they're doing it from the bow. Uh, I assume the, the uh, cable is long enough to get to the stern, we shall find out. Um, radar mounting mast uh, for the all round white light up the top and any extra aerials should you wish. Kind of cool in black. I like this, I like gray on this boat. It's kind of kind of aggressive, it's pretty cool. Um, I think I've covered everything. Let's go downstairs, have a look at the cabin. Okay, here we are downstairs. Um, this bed is perfectly doable for a couple. Um, this is the opening hatch for ventilation. It would be serve an escape hatch as well. 
down lights here, down lights there, reading light there and there with even USB charging on each of them. Um, basically, it's just a place to come and crash. Lost my sunnies down my shirt. Um, they, that's your fuses behind there. This little ledge would be okay for phones and things, but I really would um, store most of my things up on deck. In saying that, below us is a huge voluminous storage locker. So there is actually a hinged, uh, you know, uh, the base plate for the bed hinges up and there's a huge area where you could put bags for long or anything longer term storage. Clearly this area is good for storing people's guest bags throughout the day if you're not gonna be sleeping on board and a lot of people are gonna use a boat like this for that as well. Um, got a little grab handle, leather wrapped and timber uh, or teak floors I should say and a proper little head compartment. I'm actually gonna get in and just show you. So I can stand in this head, like just, I'm touching my head now, but it's, it's, it's fine. And remember, we're only on a 28 foot boat. So sitting down on the loo, I've got enough space. I've got shoulder room, leg space, so I can move my arms around. I've got this opening hatch here to ventilate this area. The light switch just there. A very nice little vanity area. You could put your toiletries bags behind there. And then inside here, it's probably where you have the loo roll, I suppose. And then you've got an electric toilet, holding tank, uh, the holding tank gauge, and you even have a shower. This pulls out to be operated as a shower and it is drained down here. Wow, that's a lot for a, for a 28 foot boat. Proper mirror, this is pretty cool. Rightio guys, draw me a 28. Um, this is a brand you need to keep an eye on. Uh, this is a boat that punches above its weight. Um, this category of boat is increasing in popularity. Um, and this is a boat that you could do so many things with. That's why it's increasing in popularity. Um, the construction seems good. The performance is great. The features are excellent. So there's really um, no argument. Price point's amazing. I think the challenge is actually gonna be getting, getting your hands on one there because they, they're proven to be pretty popular and I can see why. Um, I'm excited about this brand. I wanna see where these guys go. I know that they're building other models and they have expansion in mind and some bigger models coming. This is cool. This is gonna meet a demographic for a lot of you that wanna do more things with your day. If you're interested in how this boat test drives, that's a separate video, follow the link coming up on your screen now. My name's Dan Jones, this has been Dan's Boat Life. Support the channel, support my Patreon, give me a like, all that good stuff. Thank you so much. See you on the next one.